Hey everyone, this is Ross, and today I just thought I'd make a quick update video on my two aquariums that I've got at the minute. Because all you've seen lately is just some time lapses of me setting them up, and I haven't really got around to making other videos on the fish. Every time I do get around to making videos, uh, like kind of like this, I go to edit them, and then I run out of time editing them because it does take quite a while. So I think I'll change my style just to like what I used to do, um, just talking about the fish tanks, walking around, showing you different plants every day, and different things that happen in the tank, and then really easy for me just to stick on YouTube then. So without further ado, let's have a look at the 64 litre, um, which I've just set up around about three weeks ago now. Um, so I'm really happy with this tank. Haven't had any problems with algae, anything like that yet. And it is fully stocked now. And I've got all the plants in that I want in. Um, I did put most of the plants in when I got it. I had them all ready, either from my other small tank. I just spent kind of the day harvesting them from a small tank and um, trimming them up and um, trimming the roots you can see in some of our videos where I prepare plants um, but I basically spent the day cleaning them up separating them out and then eventually plant them in here and that day actually took me from uh, four in the afternoon until one in the morning just through preparing plants and then eventually setting up the aquascape but I think it's turned out quite well um, so first of all we'll talk about some of the plants I've got in here so in the back left hand corner we've got have to bear with me, I'm still trying to remember all the names of the plants. Um, we've got Rotella rotundifolia indica, that's just this plant here in the back left hand corner. And the reason I went for that is, it's, I'm a big fan of easy to grow plants. I mean, I haven't got any expensive lighting set up in this tank, just the standard LED strips which came with the tank. So I've got two rows of the LEDs, granted they are quite long. Then there's also a row of blue LEDs for overnight if you want to put that on. I don't tend to do that, but you can. And they're all nicely concealed in this slim profiled lid. So really happy with that. So because the lighting isn't the best, um, I've just gone for easy plants as always. My tanks are never really high tech. Um, the good thing about this Rotella, uh, or Rotala as some people call it, um, is it gets a nice red color with CO2 injection and then the highlight. So you might start to see some pinks come out on it. You can see down the lower part of it, it's just got a kind of reddy tinge or a pinky colour down the bottom there. So I'm hoping that kind of comes out with time. But if you look at that video from when I planted it, I only bought a few stems on eBay and it's so cheap and accessible just because it's such a fast growing plant. I just bought about, uh, I think, five or six stems, um, just about half a height of what it was. It didn't have many roots at all and I just planted it straight down into the, um, the aqua soil got proper aqua soil and I've also used root tabs, nutri caps, just as something else for the plant roots to find when they get to it and um, as I say at first it didn't have any roots and can you see just there there's some roots coming off um, the main stem you can see them kind of hanging down there and every time I oh, can even see better ones uh, just there and every time a new root kind of hangs down I cut the stem there and replant the top half. So I'm slowly filling out this whole area in the back here. And um, I had a couple of questions regarding how I create the, the tiered effect in this tank and basically how I banked the aqua soil up towards the back without it slipping. Don't know if you can see, but just down there, there's a little plastic divider. And all that is, is a, a Chinese takeaway uh, food container. There's another, another bit there. And I've just cut it down to size I inserted it into the, the substrate um, just to help create that banked tiered effect. Um, it is quite ugly at the minute, it is exposed above the substrate, but I'm hoping as this Rotala kind of fills out and becomes a big bush in the back left hand corner of the tank, it'll cover it and hide it. So I'm just putting up with that in a minute, but behind the Dragonstone, you can't see it at all from the main viewing angle, which is this, so that looks fine. Um, but yeah, massive fan of this plant already. It's my first time having it and it's so cheap and uh, accessible. Um, coming down here on this rock, this rock was taken directly from the old nano tank in my other room. And just tied to a rock with um, just thread, sewn thread. And it was really taken off in the other tank. So what I did was I just trimmed it down to size, this size. And I used the rest of the moss in the other tank, which I'm about to show you. And um, the second plant I want to talk about is kind of 
the main plant in this tank that's going to fill out and spread across the substrate. So you can see in all the black areas where I've got the aqua soil, I've gone for, it's called dwarf four leaf clover. I'll put the scientific name on screen now for you. But I got it in two little kind of in vitro petri dish tubs just online. And not a lot of places were doing it. It was in quite high demand. Um, so I managed to get two little tubs of it and I split it up into individual um, kind of nodes. It spreads, it kind of creeps across the bottom in stems and shoots off little shoots as you can see here. So I just cut it all up, made sure each bit had some roots and I planted them all individually. Uh, for planting it, I used these planting tongs and these are really invaluable uh, when it comes to planting fiddly plants. Um, so I'm really happy I got those because in a couple of my other tanks I've just uh, tried to plant stuff using my fingers and after a day or two they just come floating up because I haven't um, planted them deep enough. So I insert these really deep into the gravel and what you're seeing now is you can see some brown leaves there dying off. There's also some littler ones withering in the front there but what you can also see is some long stems see these really straight long stems and they've actually grown since it's been in the tank over these few weeks so what's happening is the old growth starting to die off and there's new growth coming through which is suitable to my tank you can see there in particular that's all new growth and uh, it does look quite scraggly quite messy at the minute um, but it should grow together and create a kind of four leaf clover carpet so to speak it's a funny plant as well because there's different types of leaves it gives off You've got those kind of rounded leaves, which are lower down. I think that's in the higher light. Then in my tank, you've got the classic four leaf clover shape and they just kind of shoot a little bit higher. So I'm really hoping this carpets and gets quite thick. But I was doing a lot of research into uh, easy to grow carpeting plants. And this one just popped up and I thought it was really interesting. Just something a little bit different. So I'm hoping that grows together. A little bit of algae on the glass here, which I've missed. I'll tackle that after this video. Um, over here is one of my favourite plants, which I only just kind of learned about um, just over a month ago. And this is the banana lily. And you can see why it's called that, because the root structure looks like mini, mini bananas. And uh, this has sent out a couple leaves since I've had it. So you can see that brownish leaf on the right, which is quite small. It came with that one. And since I've got it, that hasn't grown at all. And the two big leaves on the left have actually grown in just the past couple of weeks so that's doing really well and it's sending down some roots it's starting to curl them around send them down the substrate and to plant that i literally just threw it in the tank and it sank to the bottom and i just placed it where i wanted to put it and uh obviously with these rhizome plants or bulb plants you don't really bury them now in the other nano tank i had nymphoides taiwan and the leaves look similar to these leaves but it didn't have this big root structure and that was a very vigorous grower. I actually just kind of threw it out because it was going growing too fast. So if this does grow too fast, I'll just trim it, you know, a couple of times a week. I'll just try and stay on top of that. But be warned that nymphoides do grow quite fast. Just while he's out as well, you can see on that leaf, this is the little river goby. I just wanted to show you him now because he kind of darts around. And you see the strange way that the swim darting around the tank, but he's very shy. And then the other tank, he was actually always in hiding. I think because there's so many plants in this tank and there's so many fish out and about, he just feels a bit more comfortable that like he can be out and about more often. But to make him feel more comfortable, I've just made a little cave there. And I've um, kind of wedged it in between two bits of dragonstone. And all it is is uh, a little kind of porcelain cave, about finger sized. And I just buried it deep in the uh, aqua soil there. And uh, on top of that, I've got Anubius. Um, I'll put all the names on the screen for now for you. But I've actually got a few different varieties. I think that's Anubius Nana, the tiny one. And I've got some bigger varieties here. And to tax up the rock, I always used to use fishing line or thread. But now I've started using um, just super glue, super glue gel. And as long as there's no water in the tank, as long as you do this dry, the rock itself can be damp and the plant can be damp and that'll actually accelerate the curing process on it. But I was quite shocked to find that standard super glue or super glue gel isn't actually toxic to fish and it won't leak into the water. 
Um, so that was a really quick and easy way to just attach all these newbies to the, the Dragonstone. Um, on the wood here, all this is um, kind of rooted wood that I used from the other small tank that you saw a couple of videos ago. And at first, when I used it in the other tank, it was actually too buoyant and it used to float to the top. So originally I tied it down to Dragonstone, uh, but now it's waterlogged and it actually sinks. I wasn't sure if it would sink when I put it in this tank, um, but just to make sure it stayed down, I um, attached it to the Dragonstone using uh, super glue. So I've just got Java Fern narrow leaf um, super glue to that. And I've also wedged it in the cracks in the wood. So just mainly super glue and wedging it in. And you see on the kind of trunk here, I've got some moss. This moss is browned and died off. I think there's too much light for it there. But the moss which I super glued underneath the Java Fern is actually doing a lot better. Now this is Christmas moss. Uh, and I really like it because it, it kind of weeps down, it kind of hangs over stuff. Whereas Java moss like this grows up and out. Um, so that adds a really interesting look to the tank. Hopefully it spreads along this wood once it adapts to the tank. Uh, other plants, what can I talk about? So in the back here, right down there in the back corner, we've just got Ludwigia repens. I got this on eBay as well. I think I ordered five stems, but it looked quite good scraggly you can see the one on the right there looks quite eaten by snails or whatever whatever they've had in their tanks when they were growing it and um, but it wasn't great condition and obviously the, the weather in the uk it's just horrible and cold at the minute in the winter and um, so it probably hasn't done done too well in the post um but it's coming back in this tank now i've been doing the same thing as i've been doing with a rotala is i've just been cutting it every time i see a new root cutting it in half and replanting the new half into the substrate so hopefully form a nice bush there soon um so that's the main plants i've got in this tank can't really think of anything else to talk about with the plants um all doing really well with kind of lower light co2 i used to in one of my first tanks i had in this room i made a diy co2 system um if you have a look back at my videos <laughs> i was a lot younger and uh, i had a couple two liter bottles there just with um, yeast in water and uh, sugar and had some airline tubing and they were joined together and it was bubbling uh, carbon dioxide into my tank. I actually got a bit of an alg algae problem with that but the plants did do exceptionally well so I've actually tried CO2 in this tank. Um, I've, I've got it running now. It's not a high-tech system by any means um, but I was just in my local pet shop, Pets at Home, and I saw they were doing these carbon dioxide aerosol containers it's literally just kind of like a deodorant can filled with carbon dioxide and i've had this on the tank for a couple of weeks now and it's still lasting so it comes down here through the airline tubing i think you can get airline tubing that is carbon dioxide resistant this will leak a certain amount into the air um but it's doing a good enough job it comes through this check valve um so it means the carbon dioxide can't go back the way back into the can into the tank and that comes down here into this uh, transparent kind of bell. So that's full of carbon dioxide, that's full of gas. And at the bottom there, it's open, you can see. I'll just squeeze some carbon dioxide into the water just to show you the carbon dioxide coming out. And the idea is that over time, that'll slowly diffuse into the water. It's not gonna be a lot by any means, but it's gonna help somewhat and it's, uh, going to help the plants out. So I've got the three main things that the plants need in this tank. I've got the light, which is just the cheap LED lighting. I've got a bit of carbon dioxide injection, nothing too crazy, but these are all kind of low demand in plants. I've got the aqua soil. Uh, under this I actually used Tropica, I can't remember the name, I'll put the name on screen now for you, but it was kind of like a fluffy soil and it would flow up if you didn't cap it in anything. And on top, I've just used the standard kind of baked clay aqua soil. And this was actually uh, really dust free. When I filled the tank up initially, uh, you saw I put a lot of cling film or saran wrap over the plants just to stop them from floating up. And there wasn't a lot of dust at all that came up with it. And I put the fish in uh, that night as well, because I already had some cycle of filter media. I'll just show you the filter which came with the tank. And it's an internal filter. At first, I didn't like the look of it because it's really bulky in the tank. But 
it does kind of get nestled away nicely above this bit of dragonstone and at a distance you don't really notice it too much because it is black and it's out of the way but it's an internal filter with a kind of external hang on the back filter design it's quite strange so you've got the power head or the pump which sits inside that mesh area there and that mesh area is quite big around the pump so the actual pull of water doesn't pull a lot of plants onto that mesh and stick a lot, a lot of plants on and uh, I've got a cartridge there of bio balls which came with the filter so I thought why not use those the white foam there in between was actually from the old tank which was here so that was pre-cycled filter media it already had those bacteria in um, ready to go so I could just use it straight away and move the fish straight across I also used um, some water I had already that was in the tank that was already here so half the water was pretty much cycled water and the filter media was cycled as well so it was just ready to go straight away and then the final piece of media goes through I'll probably throw out once it's uh, been used up it's just a sponge which came with a filter and it's also got some activated carbon in but I probably won't renew that I'll probably just stick with a sponge and the bio balls so you've got mechanical filtration and biological filtration. I might stick some carbon in there from time to time just to remove any smells. Um, it looks really healthy though, looking at it. Um, I've started as well having a air stone in the tank just due to the sheer amount of fish in this tank. I just thought it'd be better to have an air stone. Um, I realise, yes, there is a lot of fish in this tank. Um, I'm in the process of giving away the endless. Um, so yeah, now I'll talk about the fish in this tank. So the most recent addition is the Cardinal Tetras. I've had these in the past. I was trying to think about a small schooling fish for quite a long time. I was looking at green rasboras at one point. A bit more expensive, I'd probably have to order them online, but... Went to my local pet shop, um, Maidenhead Aquatics. Been to the one in Gosforth and Pontealand. Really good shops, really knowledgeable guys uh, serving. Um, but I just saw Cardinal Tetras in all the time. They just look so healthy, so agile. You see them kind of chasing each other there. And um, they're just such a nice looking fish. I thought I'll get a school of those. So I think I've got about 11 in here, if I remember correctly. And the thing with Cardinal Tetras is the, the school kind of tightly together when they feel threatened and spread out when they're more chilled out. And as you can see, these are just spread out doing their own thing. So it shows they're quite happy in the tank, really. I would have liked maybe a more of a school and fish. I know Rummy knows Tetra school tightly together, but the Cardinal Tetra's colours just really can't be beaten, especially under these kind of bluish hue LED lights. I'm really happy with how they turned out. And these are just small Cardinals, so as they grow in size, they'll uh, get more of a red stripe to them, but the minute it's a little bit silver in some places. So enjoying it in here, just exploring. Uh, other fish I've got in here, I've got some endless. These are actually from the uh, small tank I had in my room. And uh, there's a male. All the males are colourful, as you can see. Endless, if you're not sure what they are, they're just a small type of guppy. You see that one there is actually one of my original babies from the other tank. So in the time since my first video, was a couple of months ago, that one was actually born and I stuck it in here. A little snake skin or leopard skin, whatever you call them. Um, got a few females in. All these females are actually offspring, um, which isn't ideal. I don't really want them breeding with the siblings, uh, but it's kind of done now. They're all pregnant. And in the coming weeks, I'm going to be taking these back to the pet store because I started off breeding endless and they just went through the roof without how many babies they were having. So I've already made a couple of trips to the pet shop just to give the endler babies away because I've had about 80 to 100. And I haven't had one die. They've all kind of done really well so I know the stocking is quite a lot in this tank but I am slowly getting rid of the endless and then in the end just I want to end up with cardinals sparkling gouramis the gouramis and the shrimp you can just see peeking his head up from underneath the wood there he's quite shy this male but he's a dwarf gourami see the blue and red stripes on him and that's his kind of nest or his den where he always hides out at the back there he's quite shy Often when I come in the room, he's out swimming around and I'll come in the room and he just kind of hide. So I've started making more noise when I feed him, uh, just to make him aware that I'm here and make him learn that when I'm around, he gets fed. And see in the back, just popping her head 
out the back of those uh, Java fern as the female dwarf gourami. And uh, she gets on okay with a male. The male occasionally, occasionally chases, her, chases her around the tank, but she does okay. Um, so she's kind of colourless. She's got very faint red and blue lines, but she's mainly silver. And uh, the male's quite colourful. I'll try and show you if he comes out later on. Um, next in here, we've got some Amano shrimp. You can see one perch on the rock just in the back there. Doing the thing, eating all the biofilm in the tank and bits of uneaten food. Good little scavengers. I've had these in the past too. See one just grazing on the gravel there in the front. Nice little shrimp. I've got about five of those in here. And uh, I've also got about 11 blue um, dream shrimp in here. Now these dream shrimp are very shy. I think during the day they mostly stay inside that little cave or they hide in the nooks and crannies in the rock. And sometimes they just chill out behind the, um, the filter. Things like that. So I've got 11 blue dream shrimp, which are basically uh, like cherry shrimp sized. I don't know if they're a type of cherry shrimp, but they're kind of a vivid blue colour. So I'd like to breed those. Um, but I'm not sure if I've got too many fish in here to breed them. Um, another fish, while it's out, you can see here is the tiny sparkling gourami. Now these fish, I wasn't really sure about at first. I just saw them in a nano tank in my local pet shop. And uh, they didn't look anything too special, but I just was quite interested in the way that they move. You can see how they just move. And then they just freeze, still in the water. They kind of fan the little pectoral fins around and then they just move and stop like that and they're just really interesting fish you can see it investigating down by the substrate having a look around all the plants and these are really really interesting fish you can see it's got a big black stripe run down the length of its body and it didn't have that when i got it so either it's matured in the time i've had it or it's um pretty healthy with a diet you can see another one there you can see why they're called sparkling gouramis because of the blue eye that they've got um, so they're really interesting fish and they tend to um, I know it's swimming out in the open water now but they tend to stick near the plants and uh, kind of hide amongst the java fern so they're really interesting fish to have probably one of my favorite fish in this tank just something a little bit different that you don't see every day tiny little fish doesn't add much bio load to the tank so you can have quite a few of them I'm tempted once I get rid of the uh, the uh, endlers to just replace them with a couple of sparkling gouramis. The endlers are very nice coloured though. I'm just trying to get rid of them because they do breed far too too quickly for me. Um, other fish I've got in here, they're not always out. That's the thing with fish in this tank. Uh, not all the fish are always out. So when certain ones are out, it's quite interesting to see them and see what they're up to. I've got in here as well, I think six peppered curry catfish. Just a little co uh, Corydoris, and they usually scavenge down the bottom for leftover food. So I've got a good cleanup crew in here. I've got lots of shrimp, um, a few peppered Corydoris here. Comes one now. It just froze because it's realised I'm coming up close. And it's darting across the tank. There it is there. Really nice looking little fish. Really interesting. Quite fast and free swimming as you can see it'll dart around the tank from time to time but you often see them dart up the surface well in less um, oxygenated tanks they'll sometimes dart up the surface but occasionally you see them do it in this tank um in terms of hardware in this tank i've already discussed the lights and the filter the heater just a standard 100 watt heater in the back there just place it diagonal and i know it looks quite ugly in this tank but the hopes is that the rotala will grow up and mask that over time um, but overall, really happy with this tank. Leave any suggestions, any plants you think I should get. If you think I should get any more plants, where should I put them? Just because it's kind of full at the minute. Um, what do you think about the beach effect in the front? I've noticed I'm starting to get the odd bit of aqua soil making its way into it. Um, would you suggest I get rid of this completely and make it all aqua soil and have a complete carpet across the bottom? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. What would, what would you suggest? Um, the tank in general, really nice tank, just bought from The Range, which is like a hardware store here in the UK, and it's got a nice curved glass effect, 
kind of ball front effect so you can see the tank clearly from a lot of different angles um, so I think that's a pretty comprehensive guide to this tank let me know what you think let me know what other fish I should get and uh, yeah really happy with that so let's go have a look at the other tank in my actual room now this is my new room from a couple of years uh, I moved into a couple of years ago just excuse it it's a bit of a tip at the minute and this is the other tank so this was in the other room in the place of a 64 litre and it, this I think is around 30 to 40 litres it's not too big and I just haven't filled it all the way at the top because the fish in here on the bio load don't really need that much water volume looking at what it's on as well it's quite a flimsy stand and it's already got loads of junk all over it so I just didn't fill it to the top for the time being um, it's because I didn't want it to be too top heavy um, so in this tank it's not really aquascaped how I want it it was just um, kind of leftover plants I put in here just to grow them a bit before I aquascape this tank properly um, so the first of all probably the most obvious and nicest looking plant in this tank you can see on the bottom here is java fern uh, java moss sorry and all I've done is super glue that to large kind of river pebbles and then dug it into the aqua soil so you can see that's starting to grow into a carpet like effect now it just looks really rich and really uh, almost fluffy um, so I'm just growing that for when I finally aquascape this tank so I've got lots of carpet and material and you can see the little endler fry just digging about in there looking for food it's a really nice little playground for them see one right in there looking about uh, just got a bit of leftover dragonstone in here from the other tank and I've made a, a bit of a terrace on the back there with dwarf hair grass this is my first time dry, trying uh, dwarf hair grass it says it's easy on the carton I got it in a little in vitro carton from Tropica and um, so far so good I've had it in here a couple of weeks it is starting to yellow off a little bit I think it prefers slightly higher light than this just crappy LED uh, but it's doing okay hasn't really started spreading yet but as you can see the moss is doing really well this plant here bought the other week from Maidenhead Aquatics um, Monte Carlo another carpeting plant it says it's easy on the label um, but I, I've never tried it so I just thought I'd get it a try um, so I've just got that set in the pot at the minute until I do the actual proper aquascape in this tank got another bit of the spindly wood which I didn't use in the other tank so I've just chucked that in here just a bit better for the fish uh, and then here this long plant I've got Hygrophila polysmera and I bought that on eBay yet again just I think five stems or so just for a few pounds very cheap get it for a couple of dollars in America I like the look of this plant I do like bushy plants it's got nice uh, wide leaves and you see there's lots of roots coming off the stems there because I haven't planted this I've just got it weighted down in a lead weight so it's obviously wanting some more nutrients it's sending off those roots into the water column to try and get some some more nutrients um, so I'm just growing that and then eventually I'll cut it up at the the different separate uh, areas where it's got roots so I'll probably make a cut there and replant that so I'll end up with double double the plant I've got at the minute now these plants here just floating are actually really interesting and they're a bit more rare than your standard um, Java fern and Anubias plants that you tie to bog wooden rocks keep on forgetting the name of this one but this is called Buca Flandra now I've got a couple of varieties in here. I've got Buca Flandra uh, Fia, or Dark, and I've also got Buca Flandra Green. So these are just floating for the time being, but my eventual plan, as you can see them there, is to super glue them or tie them to some um, rock in this tank. This was actually quite expensive. It was about five pounds per stem on eBay. And that's because they've stopped exporting it from Borneo, where it was actually discovered in the wild. And the locals were making some money i don't blame them uh selling it but obviously the amount of people on the internet buying it it uh started overwhelming the supply the amount that could uh, grow in the wild so all this now has to be grown in aquariums and it's a notoriously slow grower like anubius and things like that so i've just got that floating at the minute you can see there's nice little dots on the leaves little shiny dots and it's got a nice purpley sheen to some of the leaves that's going to be a really uh, interesting bushy looking plant to 
to uh, super glue the rocks. In the top here, you can see we've just got uh, sylvania, and that grows really, really rapid, and it's just pulling nutrients out of the water just to prevent uh, algae. The fish in here I've already kind of mentioned, these are just the leftover endler fry. I'm just try trying to grow them a little bit bigger just before I give them to the pet shop. But they're doing really well. See them all darting around. Got some bigger ones, some smaller ones, but I'm going to have them grow for another few weeks just before I give them away. Just to give them the best chance of surviving when I uh, put them in the pet shop. Um, in the top here, got a couple of bags of uh, Taiwan moss. I actually ordered uh, Rick Chef Luitens, another carpeting plant, which you have to tie down. But this came instead, so I told them, and ended up just sending me more Taiwan moss. So I'll take that instead of the Rika Flutens. Not too, too fussed about that. Yeah, this tank's been fine. Very low maintenance. I just uh, take 20% out once a week, and the, the babies have been doing absolutely fine. See, Boba Fett there approves. <laughs> Likes it. Um, over here on the bed, um, I'm actually going to discuss the plans I've got for the tank behind me now. Um, so this is all the materials I want to use for the new aquascape for the tank in this room. So I've got some nice looking stone. I like this big pointy bit. And the aim is to make kind of a mountainous effect. Like the mountainous regions. And uh, tie the, or glue the Book of Philandria onto this rock. And eventually have it completely cover uh, some of these rocks. I've got smaller rocks for on the substrate. I like to see when shrimps are grazing on the rocks close to the substrate. So I could bank up bits of substrate using these and and have this kind of stood up, create like a mountainous effect. In the back of the tank, I was thinking I could have a little shrimp cave or a little fish cave. I could nestle that amongst the rocks and bury it like I've done in the other tank with a little uh, tube in there. So I've got that. Um, for the substrate, I've just got aquarium gravel. I was thinking about using the aqua soil as the base, just leveling it all out flat and covering it with, um, it's not really gravel, it's kind of a, a coarse sand or a very fine gravel. Um, so I've got two bags of that which should be more than enough for this little tank. I just like how that sets off the stone, how the stone goes with it, creates a nice contrast. Um, I've got this little slate cave i ordered on ebay as well i think it's quite interesting and what i'd ideally like to do because it's in a shape that could easily go in a corner it's got a nice right angle to it nice chiseled edges looks quite natural i could have that in the corner of the tank and i could silicone one of these rocks to the top of it and then i could just disguise around the bottom with loads of plants loads of book of, Fl book of flandria um let me know what you think about that idea if you've got any other suggestions but this could definitely be hidden with, uh, with other rocks and stuff. I just have to be a bit careful I don't crack the slate cave. And um, I'm really not sure what I put in this tank when I get rid of the Endler Fry. I'm thinking literally just a lone Siamese fighting fish. If it's already in with shrimp and other fish in the pet shop, I might get some other small fish or some, uh, some larger shrimp so it can't really attack them too badly. But I'd like a kind of mountainous effect in here. Loads of Book of Florandria. Uh, and then the moss carpet in between the mountains, so to speak. And finally, I've just got a, a couple aquarium ornaments. Just ordered these online as well. Uh, at from Star Wars, for the Star Wars fans. And uh, on Star Wars, um, these are on the planet Hoth and also the planet um, Endor, which is like a forested moon. Um, so I really... I want to try and make this tank look like the Forest of Endor. I might get some bamboo, um, wooden bits of bamboo as well, and have those coming up in between the mountains and have moss growing off them, because I've got plenty of moss, as you can see. might even tie some moss to these AT-ATs to show they're kind of broken down and they've been there for quite some time. So that's my plan with this tank, make a, a Star Wars-themed tank in the jungle and then have a fish and shrimp swimming, swimming through the AT-ATs, things like that. But I've got two, so I can kind of... Have one in front of the other to create some depth in the tank. So I've got lots of stuff to choose from there. I probably won't use it all in the tank. It's probably far too much rock, too much substrate. And then I've got a choice between caves. I definitely want to use one of those because if I get shrimp, it'll make a good hideout for them. Alternatively, if I get a fighting fish, the fighting fish could hide in there. And that could be its little house. 
Um, so lots of ideas there. Let me know what you think with that. Um, but yeah, in general, really happy with how the tanks are going, except for the, the general look of this one. But it's a work in progress. So I know that was a lot. That was a half an hour video. I didn't mean it to be a half an hour video, um, but I just had a lot to say. In coming videos, I won't be editing as much. I'll just be talking, explaining about the tanks. Might get a bit repetitive, but ask some questions. I'll try and answer in the next video. And I might do some plant profiles. So talking about my thoughts specifically on each and every plant and how to care for them. So if you like the video, I really appreciate a like, a comment. And if you haven't done so already, uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.